right, I am gonna go into another painting start. And I know there's a lot going on here, but this painting start is starting your painting with uh, um, homemade papers, tissues, um, found pieces around the house, um, pieces from a book. We're talking about just um, a lot of inspired pieces that you put in your art. Here's an example of a painting that was done with, um, it got started with a lot of the marks, but a lot of the different found pieces, the tissues, um, just a lot of this, if you put your hand on, there's a lot of texture in here. And the texture is from the tissues and the homemade papers and then paints on top of it. So on this particular, this is one of those hardboard canvases, I would start, and I put these on top just to kind of show you, I would start again with just some simple mark making. You've seen me do that before, kind of just to get you started. But primarily, adding in your um, tissues, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about homemade papers, but you can use a light molding paste, or you can use a matte medium, whichever is more convenient, whatever you might have available sitting in front of you. And you just apply it by um, putting some of the molding paste down on your canvas and then putting the molding paste. This, this acts like a glue. And once it's dry, you can, you can paint on top of it. And that's actually okay if you get a, like a crinkle in it, it adds more of a texture. So the more unusual texture you have on the canvas, the better. Again, this is just a, um, this is actually from a larger piece I bought at a store. It's, um, it's going to probably take a couple coats. This will dry clear, but I did a whole series with this black, I don't know what you call it, lace, uh, it's not lace, but it's just black, um, kind of like a tissue, kind of a material tissue. Actually, it comes in a pretty big piece. So it's just a lot of fun. Uh, you can add pieces of a, a book. I use that a lot. So let's drag some of these strings from this black piece over top. Um, here's some found papers. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about the found papers because these will make these so unique in your piece of art. Nobody else will have the same piece in their art because you've made it. Let's put another piece of the tissue down. I love the dots. I love the black and white dots in a piece of art. It's a great focal. Even, even if a lot of it's covered up, Later on, you've got some wonderful texture in there. I'd spend a lot more time gluing these down. Once this dries, it will be stuck to the bottom. Okay? Now there's a great start of this particular painting. Um, here's some more papers and I've, in one of my other videos, I tell you how to get started on a lot of these, but these I could just take and literally just rip them up. If you rip it one way, you get the white, you get the solid on the back, and then you would just put these pieces down in your art. going to be the glue and sometimes you might have to use a heavier there's light molding paste there's a medium and then there's a heavy so you might have to put a, a heavy molding paste on that 
but there's a good way to start. But what I wanted to show you is a lot of these papers, what I've done is when I've had a piece of uh, uh, art and my brush is, you know, in the paint and I'm done and I just usually have this drawing paper beside me and I just brush my paint brush on the, on the paper or many times when there's a painting, I'll take the, a piece of this um, watercolor paper or drawing paper, mush it down on the painting and pull it up. So I've got a lot of these just in my stack here of pieces of paper that are absolutely beautiful. So the next thing to do is to, stick, to take this to the next step. Isn't that beautiful? These are all just, just um, scraps. So to take this to the next step, you can actually go into this, these scraps of paper and add more marks if you want to this. Because when you rip the paper, it's not all going to show up. You're going to have bits and pieces. And when you keep adding to your paper, you're going to get something like this. So you can add some paint. This is, this is the um, magenta flow acrylic. Quill, uh, quinacrinum, um, quinacrinum, quinacrinum magenta. It's like a uh, translucent. You can add that. A good color to bring into this is also some green. This is that green gold. So you're further adding some more color to your uh, papers that you've had sitting beside you. Here's the chalk marker. This is that uh, Vistro marker. Of course, this one is newer. Add yourself some dots. Let's find one where that's going to be more apparent. Here's one that's beautiful. You're playing off the light and the dark together there. So you go through your papers periodically and just add, um, another fun thing to do is have a black and white um, piece of paper around where you're adding marks. I love black and white. This is from a stamp. One of these times I'll show you how to make some beautiful stamps. This is just from a lid from, you know, a jar I dipped in black. So this is fun and then you can take pieces from your black and white. Most of the people that know me know that black and white is such a critical component of my art. And let's see. Let's add this down here. So you can see what a beautiful way to start a painting that just give you, gives you inspiration. I always say that your your next layer of your painting is always informed by the layer that is right above it. This is a harder piece. This is I'm going to have to work on getting that one stuck down. But look how beautiful this is starting to look. And then even at this point, you can always use a brayer to help things nice and flat until they get to flatten themselves. So at this point, 
when you've got your pieces and they've dried and you may have added another layer of glue down, you can still go in Usually when there's a troublemaker on my painting, that is the focal point that ends up being the most beautiful, believe it or not. At, the, at this point, whatever goes, whatever happens is the fun part. So we just keep adding here. bring some of my green in. Now that brush I didn't get totally washed off it was two-toned so we've got a lot of the two-tone colors going on there that was totally by mistake. So we've got a good start here. Um, it may look like it's a cluttered mess but this is the inspiration to bring your next layer. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm taking a look and I'm thinking, oh, wow, I'm really enjoying the blue. You may want to, I think this was like um, some fluid acrylics that I just, you know, had extra. So I just dripped it. I, you know, took the painting and dripped it down on top of this. So you may want to grab and utilize some of this beautiful color somewhere in your painting. I'm working fast through this, but I hope you can see the concept of when you do this nice and slow, you take your time and you let things dry, the beauty of the layers and the concept of what something like this um, and the value of something like this will, will you know, give you. So even though you have this going on here, you can also, let me see if I can grab something and show you at this point, if you feel so inspired, this is another of the um, Golden's food acrylic. Let's just... All right, so I just grabbed the lid. And further play. So we've got a start of this particular painting here. I have no idea where it's gonna go, but it's, it's, it's got a good start to it. I have all these that I have started with this one was some stencils um, it's I don't remember doing that but you know this is a beautiful uh, arrangement of colors this was a series of paintings that I did and this was just one of the pieces this is um, got some of the glazy medium on it some shine in it this is just another example of one of the the starts that I did and there's some gorgeous things going on here. Here's some of my signature, the circles and the swirls and um, you know, this is another one where you can take and I always look for the dark shades in something like this and go after it with some of the light colors. Then again, you just look for some of the light shades and if you want to, just keep adding to it. Because you don't know where this is going to end up. What piece, at some point, you're going to look at this and you're going to find that something just triggers and you're going to rip that particular spot off 
and you're going to incorporate that into your art. Here's the uh, Art Crayon by Marabou. These are the luscious ones. So we're going to further just mark this up. This will need a, um, a day to dry or a light fi fixative over it. But even this right here, look how beautiful that is looking. So I hope, this is a hot mess, but this is just a beautiful, this is one where the paint brought, I just had it beside me and just kept wiping, wiping the paint off on it. But this piece will eventually be uh, the backdrop or the background for further adding more color. Um, a lot of this could be covered up. Uh, I may add some texture paste to it. That would be a whole nother video to show you. But this is just an example of a wonderful way to get a start. And there is just no, uh, I mean, I just keep, keep going. Sometimes I can't stop. These were little, came in little sample packs. Look at that beautiful uh, blue in there, the um, turquoise, deep, deep, deep turquoise that can be incorporated into something. So I hope that helps. And I hope you get inspired by some of these ideas. And um, I'd love for you to share some of your artwork um, with me so I can see what you've done. But um, yeah, give it a try.